In object-oriented programming, we design programs that model real-life items. We can compare these programs to parts of the English language. A class is like a noun. It's a thing. Classes have attributes, and attributes are like adjectives. They describe the noun. Classes can also have behavior, which we represent through methods. And methods are like verbs. They are things that the class can do. In this lesson, we're going to explore classes and objects and how we can use classes and objects to model real-life things. If you're new to programming, the difference between a class and an object might be confusing, but think of it this way. A class is like a template. It defines the names of the attributes, but it doesn't give them values. On the other hand, an object is what that template makes. It gives values to those attributes that we defined in a class. We can create multiple objects from one class, but the class is what defines the structure of the object. I can think of two good ways to demonstrate this. This parking garage has thousands of cars. Corollas are probably made in the same factory with the same molds. If I need to find my car in a parking garage, how can I identify my Corolla? Probably the license plate, number of doors, trim level, color. This is a gray Corolla, trim level S, with four doors and Illinois license plate. This is a black Corolla, trim level CE, with four doors and an Ohio license plate. The class Corolla will tell us what attributes a Corolla might have, but it won't give them value. A class will say it will have a certain number of doors and it will have a trim level. When we create an object from a class, we're able to give values to those attributes. This Corolla is a black Corolla with a trim level CE. Those are values that are assigned to that attribute. And it's in a unique parking space. The other Corolla has a gray value for its color attribute, four doors, and trim level S. Thus, its attributes have values, and it's in its own parking space. Objects work the same way. If we create multiple objects, each object will have a unique place in memory or a unique parking space. If I have a successful eBay business, I might find that I am constrained by the number of packages I can send out in a day. To make more money, I need to become more scalable. That is, I need to be able to send out more packages in the same amount of time. If I review my processes, I might find I'm spending too much time filling out address labels. I can speed up this process by ordering a stamp that has the address fields predefined on it. When I come to Hathaway, I tell them which fields I want on my stamp. If I'm stamping a box for shipping, I'm going to want a ship to name, address, city, state, and zip. When, when I define the fields I want on the stamp, I'm defining a class. When I ink the stamp and I stamp the box, I'll give values to each of those fields. I'll give a ship to name, address, city, state, and zip values for a particular customer. That's creating an object. Creating a class is defining what fields I want on the stamp. Creating an object is actually filling out those fields for a particular customer. This stamp will create multiple impressions over its lifetime. Each of those impressions will be an object. If I want to send packing information or order, order information along with the order, I might order a packing slip. Again, when I come to Hathaway, I'll tell them what I want on my packing slip. Perhaps name and then lines for each of the items that's included in the order. Once again, when I order this packing slip, I'm defining a class. I'm saying what attributes I want to have on the form. Each time I sell something, I'll take a sheet off of this packet of packing slips and I'll fill out all the information. I'll fill out a particular person's name and the order items that are on that order. Next time I sell something, I'll pull another slip off and again I'll fill out the person's name and each of the items on the order. The act of populating this packing slip with actual information is creating an object. And you see in this packet of packing slips there are probably a couple of hundred. 
Thus, there are a couple of hundred objects that we can create from this packing slip. In summary, ordering a stamp and saying what fields I want on a stamp or ordering a packing slip and saying what fields I want on a packing slip is creating a class. We're defining attributes, but we're not giving them values. When we physically stamp the stamp on a box and we fill out each of those items in the stamp for a particular customer, or when I take off one of these individual pieces of paper and I fill out the customer and the order information, I'm creating an object. 